What if I told you that you can run one of those fancy large language models you've been hearing so much about on your own PC? Whether it's to use as your own personal assistant, to add AI to your app, gotta get that sparkle, or even to train or fine tune your own ML models, you can do it all on your own computer for free. We'll be doing that today with the help of this video's sponsor, Docker. Docker streamlines your machine learning and AI processes by providing simple and reliable setup of isolated containers that have everything they need to run or train your models. And with Docker Desktop, we'll be able to run these models as intended on our GPU. We'll be using the official Olama Docker image from Docker Hub. We'll download a state-of-the-art LLM from Meta called Llama. Then we'll show how to use the LLM from Python by creating an application that reads YouTube comments and asks the LLM to determine which comments break our community guidelines. First off, let's talk prerequisites. If you have no experience with Docker, that's okay, but if you want a fast and thorough introduction, check out my Docker tutorial for beginners. Currently, GPU support in Docker Desktop is only available on Windows with the WSL2 backend. That means you'll need to have WSL2 enabled in Windows, and when you install Docker Desktop, make sure you choose the WSL2 backend. If you're getting errors as soon as you launch Docker Desktop, it's most likely one of these issues. To follow this tutorial, you're going to need an NVIDIA GPU with CUDA compute capability 5.0 or greater. You can check whether your GPU meets this requirement at this NVIDIA developer page. Confirm that Docker Desktop is set up correctly and you have a compatible GPU by running this Docker command. Through Docker, it runs an NBody simulation on your GPU. In my case, we can see that it correctly identified my GPU and that we have compute capability 8.6, which is greater than 5.0. It's this dash dash GPUs equals all that gives the container access to your GPUs, so make sure you don't forget that bit. Of course, make sure your GPU drivers are up to date before doing any of this. In particular, check to see that you have an up-to-date version of the NVIDIA CUDA driver, which is this one here. You can still follow the tutorial with CPU only, but the output of any large model is likely going to be too slow to use in any real application. Olama is both a repository that hosts large language models, as well as a tool used to run those models. And lucky us, they have an official Docker image, so we can get up and running pretty quickly with this command. This starts the Olama server. We can browse available models on olama.com under the Models tab. This top featured one here, Llama 3.1, is currently the state-of-the-art model from Meta. In this case, the model comes with variations that use 8 billion, 70 billion, and 405 billion parameters. Yeah, billion with a B. I have 24 gigs of VRAM and 32 gigs of RAM, so I can only run the smallest one with a mere 8 billion parameters, which sits around 5 gigs in size. We can download and run this model by execing into our container and running a command like this one here. After it downloads the model, we have ourselves basically a terminal chat window with the model. Let's ask it to write Python code to generate Fibonacci numbers. It looks like it's chosen to view the Fibonacci numbers as the output of a matrix exponentiation, and it's even using the FastPow matrix algorithm to compute the nth power of the matrix. In any case, the model clearly works and it's running locally on my machine using the GPU. Just to prove how important using the GPU is here, let's shut down the server and run it again without GPU access. Get rid of this. Exact back in. Same exact prompt. Oof. We're getting about one word per second here. Cool that it works at all, but totally unusable if you want to actually call out to this LLM in another application. So from here on, let's continue with the GPU version. Next up, let's build an application that uses our local LLM in order to do something. We always hear so much about how YouTube comments are a mess. Well, let's build a program that takes in a video description and comments on that video and determines which comments are bad. Start by creating a virtual environment and pip installing Olama and creating our requirements TXT.
This Olama Python library provides convenience methods to call different endpoints that the Olama server that we're running exposes. Again, it's all local, so no API keys, no credit card, no signing up for an account. In our main file, we import Olama and create some constants. We need a connection string to tell Python where the Olama server is located, then the model we want to use, and we'll use a variable to specify the path where we store our prompt template. The actual template itself is just a set of instructions for the LLM with examples. The power of LLMs really comes into play here because we can use its general world knowledge to take the comment in the context of the video based on the video description. Saying something is cute in a video about birds is probably fine. But the same comment in a video about Python Lambda functions is probably very off topic. At the bottom, we finish off by giving it the real video description and comment. We'll just use dollar sign placeholders here that we'll fill in at runtime. Back to the code, you could use the YouTube Data API to pull the video description and real comments from real videos, and again use the API to actually delete comments that the LLM says are bad. Let me know in the comments if you really want to see me implement that, but for this video, let's just use a sample description and some sample comments. This description is for a fictional video about birds. And for the comments, the top 10 comments are normal, and these last four exhibit behavior that we want to flag. Based off the rules we set in our prompt, exactly and only these last four comments should be flagged by the LLM as breaking our rules. In our main function, we create an Olama client passing in our connection string. Next, we write a little function to check that the Olama server is actually online, pinging it up to 10 times before it gives up. Then we add in a little function to download the model if necessary. Here we check which models we've already downloaded and use the pull command to download the model if we haven't already done so. Make variables for our prompt template, description, and comments. Then let's just loop through each comment and call a classify function, passing in the comment and everything else, to determine whether that comment breaks the rules. This classify function is what's going to actually call out to the LLM. We fill in our placeholders, and then eventually use the generate function to call out to the LLM. Generate basically has the LLM respond to whatever the prompt is. And this has streaming mode and non-streaming mode. If you're generating long paragraphs and want to maintain responsiveness to your user, then streaming mode will give you response data as it's generated. Non-streaming mode is more appropriate for us though, we just want the final answer. For now, let's just print out the API response and run it to see what we're working with. Okay, it found the model locally, and from all the printouts we can see it's got a lot of extra keys, a lot of good data in there, but all we really care about is this response key. That's the actual text response that the model generated. So let's grab that key out, and here we parse the response and check that it has the right form. In a real app, you'd probably want to handle any thrown error one level up and either skip that comment or retry a few times. And it looks like it perfectly classified all the comments, flagging exactly and only the four we were expecting. The first time we ran it, it did take about five seconds to start up in order to load the model. But for subsequent runs, it looks like it can process about three comments per second, which would be plenty for my videos at least. If you want to go the extra mile, a real application that you might actually be deploying is probably also going to containerize the main script, and you'd want to use Docker Compose to orchestrate them. Clearly it's not necessary for this toy example, but I wanted to at least show you the general idea. Docker Compose Build, and Docker Compose Up, and there we have it, we've successfully got our containerized comment moderator up and running using a state-of-the-art large language model running locally on our computer using the GPU. Once again, thank you to Docker for making this possible and for sponsoring this video. As always, thank you to my patrons and donors for supporting the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.